the examples in this video go with lesson 11.3, geometric sequences and series. Example 1, determine whether the sequence is geometric. If so, identify the common ratio. Okay, one way we can find the common ratio if we're given the sequence is if we divide two of the terms that are actually side by side, so two consecutive terms. We can get this by finding A2 divided by A1, or we can get it by dividing A3 by A2, or we can get it by dividing A4 by A3, as long as they're consecutive terms. And we want to be sure and do the second one divided by the first one, or the fifth one divided by the fourth one. We don't want to do the other way around, because that's not going to give me the common ratio. Common ratio is what I have to multiply every time to move to the right. So if I'm trying to find out the ratio, then I'm going to divide, because I'm going to be moving to the left. I'm kind of undoing what's been done there. Um, by the way, we can say this would be um, a to the n divided by a to the n minus 1 there. Okay. So dividing in part A, we have the sequence 80, 20, 5, and 5 over 4. 20 divided by 80, that's going to give us 1 fourth. 5 divided by 20, that's going to give us 1 fourth. And then 5 over 4 divided by 5, this one's not quite so obvious. But 5 over 4 divided by 5 is the same thing as 5 over 4 times 1 over 5. And now we can see the 5s will cancel. So once again, I do get 1 fourth. So part A, yes, it is geometric. And R is equal to 1 over 4 because that is the common ratio between all my pairs of terms. Okay, now, not part B, we have 1, 8, 64, 640. <clears throat> 8 divided by 1 is going to give me 8. 64 divided by 8 is going to give me 8. So right away, this looks like it's going to be geometric again, but we do want to check that last pair. 640 divided by 64, that gives me 10. <clears throat> this one's not going to work. They all have to be 8. This one's not geometric. Okay. Example 2, write the first five terms of the geometric sequence with a1 equal to 2 and r equal to negative 3. Well, a1 is going to be equal to 2. A2 is going to be equal to 2 times negative 3, which is going to give me negative 6. A3 is going to be equal to negative 6 times negative 3, which is going to give me positive 18. A4 is going to be positive 18 times negative 3 which is going to give me negative 54. And then A5 is going to be negative 54 times negative 3, and that's going to give me positive 162. So the five terms are positive 2, negative 6, positive 18, negative 54, positive 162. Example 3, write the nth term of the geometric sequence, positive 4, positive 5, 25 over 4, 25, sorry, 125 over 16. We're going to use the formula a sub n is equal to a1 times r to the n minus 1 power. All right, uh, we know A1, we don't know R, but we can get it. We can do it this through division. Let's see, 5 divided by 4, this is 5 over 4. 25 over 4 divided by 5, and this one is not quite as obvious here, so 25 over 4 divided by 5 is the same thing as 25 over 4 times 1 fifth, 
and now we can see 5 goes into 25 5 times, and we're left with 5 times 1 on the top and five, or 4 times 1 on the bottom. The 125 over 16 divided by 25 over 4, again, this one's not quite as obvious, but if we divide 125 over 16 by 25 over 4, this is the same thing as 125 over 16 times 4 over 25. I know 4 can go into 16 4 times, and I know 25 can go into 125 5 times, and so we're left on the top with 5 times 1 and on the bottom with 4 times 1. So it looks like R is going to be equal to 5 over 4. Well, now we can just plug everything in our formula here. The nth term, A sub n, is equal to my first term, which is 4, it's the first one in the list here times the r we just found, which is 5 divided by 4, to the power n minus 1. Example 4, find the sixth term of a geometric sequence, a sub n, given that a1 is 64 and a2 is negative 16. To find r, we're going to divide a2 by a1, and this is going to give me negative one-fourth. So r is equal to negative one-fourth. Now n is going to be six, which is what they tell me right here. We want the sixth term. So the sixth term is going to be equal to a1 times the r we just found to the power six minus one, because we said n was six. I think we can throw this all in the calculator at one time. And it gives me negative 1 over 16. So it looks like our sixth term is going to be negative 1 over 16. Example 5, given the terms a2 is equal to 54 and a5 is equal to 182.25 of the geometric sequence, find r, a1, and a n. Well, once again, we're going to be using the a n formula is equal to a1 times r to the power n minus 1. All right. <clears throat> we're going to treat A5 as our AN, and we're using this so we can figure out what R is. So A5 is equal to, now A1 we don't know, but we do have A2, so we're going to slide that one in here. We're going to treat that as the first term. So 54 times R, we don't know that, and we're going to put it to the power of 5 minus 2. And the reason we're using the second power is because this term right here is not a1, it is a2. And of course the 5 comes from the fact that this was our fifth term here. So be sure you change that exponent because we're no longer using a1, we're using a2. All right, we can divide both sides by 54. We have 182.25. This is going to give me 3.375. And then 5 minus 2 is 3, so we have r to the third. Now remember the way to solve um, a power of a cubic power is to do the opposite of that or cube root it. So we want to cube root both sides. And again, the power and the radical will cancel, so we're left with just r. On the other side, we're going to have this as 3 halves, so r is going to be 3 over 2. Now, in your calculator, if you do not have a key that looks like this, you can always put it in 
with this, this means you're raising something to a power, and then your power would be 1 divided by 3. That would be the same thing as taking the cube root there. Okay, so now that we have R, we need to go back and figure out what A1 was. Okay, well, remember, R can be found if we divide A2 by A1. And R, we know, is 3 halves. And A2, we know, is 54. So we're looking for A1. And I can solve this by cross-multiplying. We have 3 times A1. This is going to be equal to 108. And if I divide by 3, it turns out the first term for my sequence is 36. And then finally, we need to write out the general formula for a n, all right? So a sub n is equal to a 1 times r, which we found to be 3 halves, to the power n minus 1. And this should generate a sequence that has 54 in position 2 and 182.25 in position 5. Example 6, find the sum from i equals 1 to 7 of 9 times 1 third raised to the power i minus 1. Okay, now one thing we can do is we can expand this like we did back in section 1 and write 9 times 1 third to the 1 minus 1 power plus, 9 times 1 third to the 2 minus 1 power plus, 9 times 1 third to the 3 minus 1 power, and so on and so on, until we get to 9 times 1 third to the power of 7 minus 1. And then we can add all those together. Or we can use our sum formula. We can add together the first n terms of a geometric sequence if we take the first term and multiply that by 1 minus r to the power of n and then divide that by 1 minus r. All right, let's pick out the pieces here in our summation. a1 is going to be equal to 9 times 1 third to the power 1 minus 1. Well, let's see. This is just going to give me 9 because 1 minus 1 is 0, a third to the 0 power is 1, and 1 times 9 is 9. So we have our A1. R conveniently is given to me right here because this is what I'm multiplying by every time. And then N conveniently is given to me right here because I'm going to add everything until I get to the seventh one and then I'm going to stop. So I think we have all we need to plug into the formula. All right, the sum of the first seven terms is the first term times one minus the common ratio raised to the power of seven divided by one minus the common ratio. Now this one you may not be able to put in your calculator all at once. You might have to work a little bit for it. So my calculator is giving me 1,093 divided by 81. Example 7, find the sum of the finite series 3 plus 6 plus 12 plus and so on, plus 768. Okay, let's find our common ratio here. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 12 divided by 6 is also 2. It looks like r is going to be equal to 2. All right, our sum formula, remember, s sub n is equal to a 1 times 1 minus r to the power of n divided by 1 minus r. Things that we know, we have a1, that's going to be our 3. We have r, that's going to be our 2. So what I'm missing is n. How many terms is it I'm adding together? And I don't have any idea at all. So I have to figure out, using this term, what is n. And we're going to go back to the a sub n is equal to a1 times r to the n minus 1 power, and that's going to tell me what n is equal to. So our nth term is 768 
The first term in our series is 3. R, we decided, was going to be 2. And then the power is going to be n minus 1. I have no idea what this is going to be. Okay, be really careful here. Do not multiply 3 times 2 because 2 has the exponent on it, and these are not considered like terms. But we can divide both sides by 3. So let's see, 768 divided by 3 gives me 256, and this is 2 to the power n minus 1, and now we're trying to solve for a variable that's up here in the exponent, so you have to rely on some of your techniques from your previous class, and if you don't remember how to release the exponent down into the problem so that you can actually uh, work this problem, then what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to write it in log form. We're going to have to use logarithms, that's right, to try and solve for this particular exponent. So that means we have a log base 2 of 256, and it's going to be equal to the exponent there, n minus 1. Now, I don't know about you, but my calculator cannot do a log base 2 of 256, but it can do a log base 10 of 256 divided by a log base 10 of 2. And so I'm going to do that. We've done the change of base formula there. This side very kindly simplifies into the integer 8, so 8 is equal to n minus 1, and if we add 1 to both sides, we'll find out that n is actually equal to 9. And now I have my power of n. We can actually find the sum of this series right here. The sum of the first nine terms is equal to the first term times 1 minus 2 to the ninth power divided by 1 minus 2. And this is giving me 1,533 for my sum. Example A, find the sum if possible. A, we're going to find the sum from 1 to infinity of 4 times 3 over 4 to the i minus 1 power. Okay. The infinite sum formula is the sum is equal to our first term divided by 1 minus r. So we need a first term and we need a common ratio here. Now the common ratio, remember, has very kindly been given to me right here. So I have that. And then the first term we're going to get and it also is very conveniently given to me right here, but we're just going to prove that and make sure. So A1 is equal to 4 times 3 over 4 to the power of 1 minus 1. And 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1, and 1 times 4 is going to give me 4. Okay, so this thing will have a sum. And the reason we know that it has a sum is because r, 3 over 4, is a proper fraction. And by proper fraction, I mean the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Okay, um, let's see. So to find the sum of all of those terms, we're going to take our first term and divide it by 1 minus 3 over 4, the r. And we can put that in the calculator. And it gives me 16. So the sum for part A is going to be 16. All right, for part B, we have the series 2 plus 5 over 2 plus 25 over 8 plus 125 over 32. So we have our A1 conveniently given to me right here, but I don't have my common ratio R. That's the first thing we're going to have to figure out. Let's divide 5 halves by 2. 5 halves divided by 2 is the same thing as 5 halves times 1 half. 5 times 1 on the top is 5. 2 times 2 on the bottom is 4. Now, 
this is greater than 1, so no sum is going to exist. As long as my R value is less than 1 or greater than negative 1, we're going to have a sum. But since 5 over 4, which becomes 1.25, is more than 1, no sum exists, and we can't do part B. Example 9, write the following repeating decimals as a fraction. Part A, 0 0.7 repeating. Okay, if we wanted to expand this, we could write this actually as 0 0.7 plus 0 0.07 plus 0 0.007 plus 0 0.0007 and so on. So we can actually treat this uh, repeating decimal as an infinite sum. Now remember for my infinite sum formula, I need to know my first term. Here it is. And I need to know the common ratio, which I don't have, but I can get pretty quickly if I just divide two consecutive terms. So in my handy dandy calculator, if I divide the second term by the first term, it does give me 0.1. And so we can find the sum as 0.7 divided by 1 minus 0.1. And when you put this into your calculator, it gives you 7 over 9. And so the decimal 0 0.7 repeating is the same thing as the fraction 7 over 9. Now, part B is going to be a little bit trickier because we're trying to figure out what fraction goes with the decimal 0 0.3 and then 4 repeating. It's not 3, 4 repeating. The 4 is the only thing that's repeating. And so we can write this as 0 0.34 plus 0 0.004 plus 0 0.0004 and so on. And we might actually want to break this part right here into 0.3 plus 0.04 and then plus 0.004 plus 0.0004 and so on. And the reason I say that is because I noticed that this piece right here I can treat as my infinite sum figure out what fraction it is, and then I can add 0.3 to it. And the reason I want to do that is because I can see these are just 4s from here on out. I'm just adding zeros in there. So I'm going to have my common ratio in there. If I try to throw this in there, the 0.3, the part that's not like the rest. Remember that game from Sesame Street? Which of these three are not like the rest? Anyway, um, we're going to run into some problems there. So it's just going to be easier just to bring this down and add it to whatever that infinite sum is going to be. Okay, that means that my A1 term is going to be located right here. It's 0.04. Let's figure out R. We'll take our second term, 0.004, and divide it by our first term, 0.04. And that is going to give me 0.1. So this is 1 over 10 again. All right, now we have everything we need. The sum, the infinite sum, is going to be our first term, 0.04, divided by 1 minus 0 0.01, or 0.1. And this is going to give me 2 over 45. And so the fraction 0 0.3 with the repeating 4 is going to be equal to 0 0.3 plus 2 over 45. And that gives me 31 over 90.
So the fraction 0 0.3 with the 4 repeating is equal to the fraction 31 over 90. Example 10, suppose that after a tax rebate, an individual spends $210. The money is then re-spent over and over again, each time at a rate of 70%. Determine the total amount spent. Assume that the money can represent an infinite number of times, can be re-spent an infinite number of times. Okay, so we start off with $210, and then the next time the money is spent, it is spent at 70%, so 70% of $210. And then the next time that the money is spent, it's spent at 70% of 70% of $210. And then the next time it's spent, it's spent at 70% of 70% of, oops, I just put 7% there. Seventy percent of two hundred ten dollars, and so on. So A one is going to be two hundred ten. This is our starting point, and R. I hope you can clearly see is going to be 0.7 because if we divide A two by A one, the two hundred tens are going to cancel each other out. Okay, we are using this infinite number of times, so I'm going to use my infinite sum formula, A1 divided by 1 minus R, and this is going to give me 700. So that $210 turns into $700 if it's re-spent time after time after time at a 70% rate. Example 11. Suppose that an employee contributes $100 to an annuity at the end of each month for 25 years. If the annuity earns 7%, Part A determine the value of the annuity at the end of the 25-year period, and then Part B, how much interest will be earned. All right, let's back up one slide because the annuity formula that we want is right here, and this looks really, really complicated, but just keep in mind, P is the principal value or the starting amount. All right, in our case, we're going to be putting in $100 every month, or our principal payment, I guess I should be saying, okay? Now, R, this is the interest rate. So in our case, the interest rate is 7%, and we will represent that as a decimal. N stands for the number of times per year you are contributing to this annuity. And since in our case it tells us you are contributing each month and there are 12 months in a year, Rn is going to be 12. Of course, T, this is the time and it's measured in years. So how long are we keeping this money in the annuity? And us, it's going to be 25 years. And then we have an rate and we have an N. So we're ready. We're ready to put everything in the formula for us, okay? So the amount that's actually in the annuity is going to be $100 times 1 plus our interest rate divided by 12. That tells you how much of that 7% uh, interest you get each month to the power 12 times 25, this exponent is how many times each year you get interest. Minus 1 divided by the interest rate over 12. All right, I think 
and you might be able to put that in the calculator at once. It's probably going to be a little bit complicated. You might want to do it piece by piece. But in either case, I'm going to put that in there and see what I get. And if I round this to dollars and cents, this is giving me $81,007.17. So at the end of 25 years, this person can expect to have $81,007.17. Part B, how much of that is actually interest? So how much of that is interest and how much of it is money that the person actually put into the account, okay? How much was invested? Because it doesn't tell us that. It just says $100 a month. We can figure that out. $100 every month is going to be $1,200. So each year this person was contributing $1,200. But remember, they were contributing not for one year, they were contributing for 25 years. So over 25 years, this person was contributing 1200 times $25, or $30,000. So the person who made the investment put in $30,000, and yet there's $81,007.17 in the annuity. So whatever is not principal or the amount that the person put in to the investment is considered to be interest. So for Part B, the interest is going to be our total here, $81,000. $7.17 minus the part of this that actually came out of that person's pocket. And that's going to be $51,000. And 17 cents. So $51,000 in interest, y'all. 